Thank you. Thanks, Chris. I, you know, what you just said is so vital to what this school is about because we haven't been here that long and I try to encourage my students to like spread the word because the more dynamic our dialogue gets and, and even what you just said a lot of people are completely unaware that uh, even though we have a 70 percent consumer based economy we have this big chunk that is pulling away from it as you just illustrated and uh, I guess the best thing that we can do it, is try to fix things ourselves and then spread the word out to get the populace to know more and more. Absolutely. It's the, it's the only thing to do at this point. Um, as trade as it sounds, you have to be the change you wish to see. Uh, somebody's got to be the ambassador for talking about a new way to do things. And, you know, at first it'll be a little awkward. Uh, it'll even be resisted. And then in a number of years, people will look back and, and say, oh, no, we've always been doing it this way. Uh, that's just how change happens. So, yeah, it's time for a big it's time for a big change in how we're doing things. And the mystery is that we haven't as a society really looked and said, gosh, record numbers of people on food stamps, real median incomes have been trending down for years and years. The top 0.1% are just getting wealthier and wealthier, which is totally predictable. When the Fed prints 85 billion, I don't see any of that, you know, first, you know, the people who do skim as much off as they possibly can cuz that's human nature and and it just keeps getting, you know, nothing's really getting fixed in this story. And so it's time I think people in that class, in your school, it's up to all of us to say, time out. What works? What doesn't work? What do we need to do? And in any story of change, there's only three questions to ask. What are we going to keep doing? There's lots to preserve here. What are we going to stop doing? There's stuff that just doesn't make sense. We shouldn't be doing it. And then what new things do we need to consider doing? And it's in that third one, we have to be uh, empowered, entitled to go out and make a ton of mistakes. You know, Thomas Edison loved the guy. Some reporter was asking him, oh, look, you know, you've, you've failed uh, 19,000 times in making a light bulb. And he said, no, I found 19,000 ways not to make a light bulb, right? Shifted it. And so we have to make a lot of mistakes and we have to be ready to make mistakes and, and uh, be prepared for that because that's the nature of, uh, uh, you know, a whole new paradigm. And that's what we have to step into. So, yeah, proselytize if it feels that way. But it's just the right story has to get out there. Absolutely. I got one last question, and it's one that a lot of the students have seen your videos ask. What can they do? I know on your website you go into uh, what you call resiliency, and if you could explain resiliency and kind of leave on a positive note with our students about what they could take part of and to make a change. Well, it's this is an I love big periods of change like the one we're in because we get to ask the big, big juicy questions, right? You know. Uh, the, the thing that's, that's, uh, has always worked for me is whatever you're doing, follow your passion, whatever your pat, whatever you become really passionate about, you will become really good at whatever you become really good at. There will be demand for that's always true. And resiliency for me is about, uh, taking control of those things I can, can take control of and, and taking them back. And most of these things feel really good and they save me money. So my house is more energy resilient. I have multiple fuel sources right now. It's a lot more efficient than it used to be. So I spend a lot less money on, on energy at this point in time. I have the same story around food. I have the same story around even my finances, what I will and won't invest in at this point in time. I stand before you as somebody who purposely cut his standard of living in half and doubled his quality of life. And so to me, I've discovered that there's a whole consumer culture, which is about um, just having more, 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 more. And that's marketed to us thousands of times every single day. And to be able to really rationalize what makes sense for me, what I really need, what I don't need, is, is taking that step has, has been a, just an absolute boon for my own life. So I, I'm actually I'm very comfortable with where we are and where I am personally. I have some major concerns about my country and about this world. I see some trends that are clearly going in the wrong direction. And it's up to me to identify them and then step off to the side. And I, I bet you people in your class have already done that. How many people in, that, in the room there believe that Social Security will be there for you when you retire? No hands? So see, you've already identified a trend that I, I agree with, and you're probably, because you're not relying on that, will be sidestepping it. But for people who are fully depending on that, there's a big chance for disappointment in there. And so in this story, 
yeah, there's a lot of change, a lot of shifts, and there are a lot of opportunities. And the big thing to be aware of is to really understand what the true story is and decide for yourself what makes sense and then go with that. And whatever you do, be passionate about it. All right. Thanks again, Chris. We're going to keep around. Thanks, Chris. All right. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, everyone.